Okay, our problem number 13, it, it looks nightmarish. It really does. And so I'll write this down for you, and it's going to be d dx, and then it's going to be one-half the secant of x times the tangent of x plus one-half times the natural log of secant x plus the tangent of x. Well, I noticed there's a constant multiple there that I can pull out pretty quickly. So it's going to be one-half times this nightmarish-looking derivative. I like to capture things that I think will look pretty easy to do first off. I'm going to say it looks pretty easy to do. And what's that going to be? Let's write this down. So it's going to be plus. I already got the half pulled out, by the way. And the derivative of natural log is going to be 1 over its argument. And, you know, I just want to remind you, we just, we just did the secant. Do you remember that? That was from the prior problem. When we, it was tan x secant x. So I'll put this down. I'm using the, tan, the uh, chain rule. Now, again, I, I remember the derivative of tangent. It's secant squared. All right, that's done. All right? So I'm going to do this first guy. And again, I've already pulled it half out. And, yeah, you know, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, the derivative of, um, it's, it's going to be product rule now. It's going to be the derivative of secant, secant, tan, or tan, secant. I'll get rid of the secant tan. times the second function, which is tangent. It's going to be hard to jam that in there, isn't it? And then it's going to be plus, let's see, secant x, and then the derivative of tangent secant squared. I've got a lot of work to do, because I don't see anything in the key that, remote, that remotely looks like that. So let, let's go through it and kind of, you know, one step at a time, so to speak. You know, the first term, this term over here, I'm going to write it a little differently. I'm going to write secant x tangent squared. The next guy I'm going to write is secant cubed. Okay, the next guy I'm going to factor it. And what do I see over there? And I see, let's see, secant comes out, right? And what do you left off with? Be careful. You left off with um, tangent x plus secant x. And that's over secant x plus tangent of x. Well, I'm noticing these cancel off, at least conditionally. And then I'm kind of left with something. And I, I see that. I got, you know, um, a bunch of terms there, don't I? And those terms have all the secant in it. So I'm going to pull a secant out and see what I see now. So I see secant x. I'm pulling that over 2. And then I see tangent squared. And then I see secant cubed x. And then I see a secant, which I pulled out, which is going to be 1. All right? So now the question is, oh, look at that. I still don't see this in the K. And my concern over here is, well, I kind of see something. Oh, you know what? I made a mistake already. I just noticed it. Let me just make sure I'm not speaking too quickly over here. I said I factored a secant. I wouldn't have a secant uh, squared. I'd have a secant uh, a cube. I'd have a secant squared. All right? I'll put that in there for you. So I, I'm seeing something over here. And this is an identity, Pythagorean identity. What's that going to be? That's going to be secant squared. So let's write that down. So what do you see over here? You see secant x over 2. And I see over here, you know, again, tangent squared of x plus 1 is secant squared. So I see 2 secant squared x now. What happens here? The 2 cancels off and left off with secant cubed of x. I'm going to look at the k, and I want, I'm hoping to see it. Right? Do I see it? I do. It's choice A. Thank you.